when we go through fire when we go through the flames of life when we go through tough situations in life when we go through those floods jesus says i am there with you i am there with you so turn with me to isaiah chapter 43 and verses 1 and 2 this is what the lord says he who created you jacob he who formed you israel do not fear i have redeemed you i have summoned you by name you are mine when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. I'm going to shelter you. I'm going to walk with you. So this morning, I want you to know that we live in a world that is subjected to sicknesses. That is subjected to deterioration. I wish that we... The day we are saved, we have been transplanted into another planet. No, we are not. We are still part of this deteriorating world. Every day, there is a new kind of sickness. As much as they want to discover a new planet, there is a new variation of a sickness that is coming. It is a tough life. It is a difficult situation. Part of it is because we are part of the fallen world. Adam sinned and with sin entering into the world, the world was corrupted. And with generation to generation to generation of sin coming down, the world is going through difficulties. And you know that we have an enemy. And his only job on the face of the earth is this, that he has come to steal, to kill and what? Destroy. To steal, kill and destroy. That's his work. And therefore, he wants to enter into families and steal the joy of the family. Cause panic in different lives. 
cause sicknesses that would keep us so deviant in our focus. We want to finish those problems because some of us have been facing one problem after the other. We've been going through fire. We've been going through difficulties. We've been going through tough situations. But this morning, I want to declare to you, my Jesus is with you. Turn to someone and say, Jesus, my Jesus is with you. So this morning, I want you to gain your strength. Gather your strength. Because when we walk through fire, Jesus says, take heart, take heart. I have overcome this world. Amen. I have overcome this world. Turn with me to John chapter 16 and uh, verse 33. Can we read it together, everyone? I have told you these things. Come on, everyone reading together. Can I hear you read out, please? I have told you these things so that in me you have peace. Out of him there's no peace in this world. In me you have peace. In this world you have what? Trouble. Turn to someone say, in this world you have what? Trouble. Come on, shake someone. Shake someone else and say, hey, in this world, what? We have trouble. But take heart. What have I done? I have overcome the world. Take heart. I, will, I have overcome this world. There are a few things that I want to share with you this morning about taking heart. Because from scriptures, I want to encourage you and say, don't, don't worry. What is happening in your life is, is something that is, that is bound to happen as we live on the face of the earth. But take heart because Jesus has overcome this world. Jesus has overcome this world. Firstly, I want you to know, take heart with God, all things are possible. Amen. This last week, one of our, one of our sisters uh, came to the church and after that felt that our left hand was, was completely having a lot of pain. And so they, they just went on to the hospital for the next three days. It was, it was so much of, of examinations and angiogram and all of the different things. Listen to this very carefully because Jesus touched her and she's healed in Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a big hand of praise. Because with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. The angel of the Lord appeared unto Mary and said, Mary, thou shalt conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And she asked, how can this be? For that's the question of our life. There are many, many questions that emerge out of our life when we go through consistent troubles. How can this be? Will there be a solution to the problems that I'm facing? But this morning, the angel of the Lord replied to Mary, and that is the same word that comes to us and says, with God, all things are possible. The father brought the son to Jesus and said, your disciples couldn't do anything. Your disciples couldn't do anything. Sometimes we, as people, may not, may not have everything. But I want to tell you, this morning, the pastors and leaders are not the one who heals. Jesus heals. Amen. Jesus heals. I know that the giftedness of healing passes around the church. There is an authority over the church to pray for healing. But this morning, I want you to know that healing does not come because church prays. Healing comes because Jesus heals. This morning, I just don't want to sit down and debate whether, hey, when Paul prayed for the thorn, whether it was a sickness or whether it was something about his ministry or whether it was some problem that he was going through because many, many people, because Paul does not tell us in that particular passage, but in the context of the passage, it's in the context of the hardships in ministry. But here is what I want to highlight from the passage in a Second Corinthians in a, a chapter uh, number 12 and verse 7 to 10. Second Corinthians chapter number 12, verses 7 to 10. One of the things that I understand from this passage is that he is praying. And that prayer is not being answered. And this passage, a classical passage where Paul is telling in Second Corinthians and chapter 12. And let's read verse 7 onwards. Everyone reading together, please. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded. Come on, everyone. Three, three times what? He pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace. Come on, turn to someone and say, my grace. My grace is sufficient for, for my power is made perfect in weaknesses. My power. Turn to someone and say, my power. It's when we are weak that he becomes what? Strong. Turn to someone and say, when I'm weak. 
I'm not saying that we need to seek weakness. I'm not saying that we got to pursue on and not pray when we are sick. No, when there is a sickness, we go all out and pray because we believe in healing. There are times in which we pray and we don't have answers. I want to declare to you that his grace, amen, is abundance. That divine ability to go through this problem. Number three, Jesus says, take heart. Take heart. I've overcome this world. Take heart. With me, all things are possible. Take heart. Because my grace is sufficient for you. Good morning, I want to declare to you, take heart. Because all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. And Paul, once again, through all the difficulties and sufferings and hardships that he had to go through in his life, he says, you know what? In my weaknesses, he comes. In my weaknesses, the spirit groans from within and starts to intercede for us. And let's go to Romans chapter 8 and verse 26 to 28. In the same way, the spirit helps us. Turn to someone and say, the spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit. But the spirit intercedes to God in accordance to his will. And let's read the most important part. And let's all read together. And we know, come on everyone. We know that in all things, God works together for good for those who love him. God works together for good. Turn to someone and say, for good. Turn to someone and say, God is good. All the time. Amen. I mean, if you know that God is good all the time. If he's good all the time, he works all things good for us. What the enemy means for evil, he will turn it for our good. Joseph says to his brothers, you intended to harm me, but God. There is an intention of God and a purpose of God and he will fulfill and that purpose is always going to be good. I mean, that purpose is always going to be absolutely good for your life. And therefore, there are times and situations when we go through the fiery situations and flood-like situations. When we go through those fire, when we go through the flood, when we go through difficult times, I want you to gather strength from within. Because the Spirit of God who's in you, He is praying and interceding for you. Amen. Amen. He works all things. Come on, turn to someone and say once again. He works all things together for good. Fourthly, take heart, Jesus says. I've overcome this world. Take heart. Take heart because I am a God of all comforts. And therefore, experience the comfort of God. All things are possible. Miracles are absolutely happening. I believe in miracles. If we believe Jesus is able to do great and exceedingly great things in our lives. Uh, we go through fire. We go through flames. We go through floods. We go through tough times. And we don't understand everything. And what you're going through may be the most difficult situation. Nobody else can understand what you're going through. Because what you're going through is what you are going through. And therefore, you can share with people and, and we can empathize and sympathize. But when you go through what you go through, you are going through what you're going through. I want you to know that God of all comforts, turn to someone and say, God of all comforts. And that's, that's something that we cannot, cannot do as a human being. Yes, we can visit people. Yes, we can listen to people. Yes, we can cry with people. Yes, we can do something about helping people. But how do you comfort people who have lost their loved ones? How do you comfort people when you're going through extreme pain? And that's the world that we live in. That's when I call upon God, who is our comfort. I want to promise you one thing, that God comforts and no human being can ever comfort like how God comforts. Paul says in 2 Corinthians and chapter 1, he says, hey, you know what? 
Guys, you don't understand what we are going through, but we have gone through the worst situation. Let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 8. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to what? Endure. So that we despaired of life itself. We felt so discouraged and depressed that we didn't want our life itself. Is it Paul who is talking this? Yeah, it's Paul who is talking this. He's going through extreme difficulty and pressures in his life. Because many people don't want to have any pressure. The moment they have a little bit of pressure, they feel like, hey, everything is gone. God is not with them. No, 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 no. We go through extreme pressures in life. I don't see anybody in the New Testament who was, was close to the heart of God. Doesn't Paul know that God is always with him? Doesn't, God, that, doesn't Paul know that the Spirit always helps him in his weaknesses? But there are times and situations in our life we despair our life itself. But this morning I want you to know, God of all comforts. Turn to someone and say, God of all comforts comforts. And that's what he says in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 3 and 4. Can we read it together? Praise be to God. Everyone reading together. Praise be to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of what? Compassion. Everyone say Father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. We ourselves receive. See, there is an ability that God gives us through our difficulties. That he comes and he comforts us. And what happens when he comforts us is that there is something that happens that we know and we know for sure. And what do we know for sure? That nobody else could have comforted you. That only God could comfort you. And with that comfort, you begin to comfort others. You begin to encourage others. I believe that as we go through tough times, it's important that you don't go into isolation. You huddle together as the body of Christ. When we go through tough times, don't switch off your phone. Just switch off your phone if you want to spend some time in prayer. But call somebody. Reach out to somebody. Be part of a smaller group. Huddle together. Because everyone has gone through something in their life. There's nobody who has not gone through anything in life. Everybody has gone through something in life. That God, the Father of all comforts, have comforted. And therefore, when we huddle ourselves together and comfort with the same comfort that God has comforted us, that's how God's comfort spreads across an entire body. God's comfort can actually be for an entire city if the church of Jesus Christ rises up. This morning, I want you to know that the God of all comforts is with you. The God of all comforts is with you. And he can guide you and lead you safely. Fifthly and finally, this morning, take heart. Take heart. You know why we have to take heart? Because we have a blessed hope. Turn to someone as a blessed hope. Blessed hope in Christ Jesus. And what is this blessed hope in Christ Jesus? And this is what I totally and truly believe. And this is what each and every one of you need to be believing this morning. Hey, you know what? We have eternal life that is much, 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 much greater than the life of the earth. Eternal life. That's my excitement. That today or tomorrow or day after tomorrow. It doesn't matter what happens to me. As long as I have Christ. That's settled. That's absolutely settled. For me the greatest concern of people. Who are going through extreme difficulty and sicknesses. And visit people and their deathbed. The only thing that I look for. Is whether they have Christ or not. If they have Christ. And if they are old enough, I pray, God, God, give them pain-free life. You know, I want you to close your eyes with me. I want you to look up to Jesus this morning and look up to him and say, God, we look up to you because you are everything for me. You are everything for me. And I completely, completely trust you. I trust you because you will lead me. You will guide me. This morning, if you are going through troubled times, if you are going through difficulties in your life, if you are facing extreme painful situations in your life, or someone around you is going through sicknesses, or is going through troubles, I want you 
you to believe with God all things are possible. And I want you to lift up your hands wherever you are. If you would represent someone and say, God, I want you to, I want you to touch me. I want you to touch my father or mother. I want you to touch my brother or sister. I want you to touch, oh father, those who are going through tough times. This morning, I want you to stand up to your feet because we want to pray together as a church together and say, God, do something powerful. Do something miraculous this morning. Do something miraculous this morning, oh Father. Would you lift up your hands and once again declare together, even though the enemy means for evil, he's working all of it around for good, for his glory this morning because he is here. His love is here. His comfort is here. His presence is here. His healing is here. His his deliverance is here. He works all things together for good. For he loves you. He loves you. Would he lift up your hands? Would he lift up your hands? And let's, let's pray together this morning. Let's pray together this morning. And everyone praying together. I want you to pray for one sister, Vincy. Who's, who's, the doctors are saying it's, it's very difficult. It's very tough. But I want you to lift up your hands. She's gone through. Uh, she's going through cancer and it's spreading all across. But we pray, our oh Father, that you would halt that cancer in the name of Jesus. With you, all things are possible. We have seen miracles of fourth stage and and fourth stage and beyond cancer being healed in Jesus name why not oh father touch Vincy in the name of Jesus would you lift up your hands and say father we've been praying for Vipin for a very long time oh father I pray Vipin will be healed in Jesus name with you all things are possible you have said oh father that we gotta believe in you we believe in you I trust in you oh father we believe in you oh Jesus I trust in you we believe in you I trust in you I trust in you Hallelujah. I believe you are my healer. I believe you're my healer. And I believe you are all I need. Would you lift up your hands and believe together? I believe you're Jesus is touching you. Jesus is touching you. I believe. You're my portion. Oh, I believe. You're more than enough for me. Jesus is
of your sickness put a hand at the place of your problem or pray for the person whom you're praying for this morning I pray in the name of Jesus every migraine headaches leave I pray our oh father that everything that has to do with the brain or brain cells the veins in the brain and the arteries in the brain a father, I pray in the name of Jesus for a supernatural intervention. I put a father that you would do a supernatural, intricate surgery that will settle issues this morning. Because we believe all things are possible. We believe all things work together for good. We believe in your grace that is sufficient for us, oh Father, this morning. We believe, oh Father, you will turn things around for our good. We believe in the God of all comforts. We believe in eternal life that is greater, greater, greater than anything on the face of the earth. Oh, we want to thank you. We want to declare together. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say Amen. Can we give the Lord a big hand of praise? Amen. If you're in Chennai, join us for our worship services in English at our Little Mount Center at 6.30 a.m., 8.15 a.m., 10 a.m., 11.45 a.m. or at 4.30 p.m. We have worship services in English, Tamil, Hindi and Telugu. For more details, visit nlag.in.